Senator McKenzie. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Acting Deputy President. And I, like probably Senator Di Natale and Senator Farrell, are wrapped that the true code starts again tonight and we've got AFL uh, back on our TVs, uh, so the southern states are very, very excited about that. Um, and haven't we missed it? Haven't we missed it? Um, you know, and just thinking about the impact of COVID on community sport, uh, on our representative uh, athletes who were hoping to head off to Tokyo Olympics. Uh, we've missed Wimbledon this year. So there's been a whole uh, raft of things that are part of our daily lives, if we're involved in community sport, but also part of our national identity and, and the international stage. So um, I'm very much like everyone else uh, who's contributed to this bill, looking forward to um, community sport and, and our international sporting arrangements getting uh, back on track. Enhancing Australia's anti-doping capabilities is an incredibly important issue when it comes to sporting integrity. Uh, our young Australians look up to our athletes and our sporting stars as model citizens of how to conduct uh, themselves, to understand sport and sportsmanship, uh, fairness, how to play in teams, key skills and characteristics that they actually need for life. And as others have mentioned, sport is also big business. Huge number of people are employed right across our economy in, uh, in sport. Volunteering levels are through the roof, and sport also, um, and activity levels. Sport participation assists with great health outcomes uh, and, and social outcomes. And as I said earlier, it also instils national pride as we see Australian athletes and teams uh, always <coughs> punching, riding, swimming, or running uh, above their weight which makes us very, very proud. But we also are known globally not for just being hard at it on the track or in the pool or on the field, uh, but also being champions of fair play and a fair go and integrity. Sport has shaped our culture and identity as Australian and it reflects our broader values uh, of sportsmanship and respect for the umpire. It unites our nation like nothing else, bringing diverse political views together, people from different geographies, different cultures, to come together and celebrate our success uh, as one. From grassroots to the world's iconic grass courts and arenas, sports gives us our heroes. And we celebrate Stephen Bradbury, not only because, because he won a winter gold medal, Winter Olympics gold medal, but because he was there against all the odds and stood tall as those around him fell. Uh, from Betty Cuthbert to Louise Sauvage, we share Australia's victories as we, and we expect a level playing field. This bill really puts us as Australians as leading the world in setting up a sports integrity system. On August 5, 2017, the then Sports Minister Greg Hunt announced a review into Australia's sports integrity arrangements to be led by uh, Justice James Wood, QC. I had the great privilege to release that Wood review in August 2018, and it was a key component in the development of Australia's first comprehensive national sports plan, Sport 2030. I want to thank uh, James Wood and his fellow panel members for their efforts in producing the most comprehensive review of Australia's sports integrity arrangements ever conducted. The Wood review found doping is much more prevalent and widespread than ever among athletes at all levels. And we often think of the high-profile examples that have been mentioned in contributions thus far. But what the Wood Review found was that uh, issues in teams at amateur levels, in junior competitions, were being affected um, and that we really needed a strong system of monitoring and compliance uh, right across the sporting landscape to ensure that those young athletes were protected. The Wood Review also found serious and organised crime was involved in match fixing and the supply of performance and uh, performance enhancing drug. Under our nation's first sports plan, Sport 2030, we now have a clear path to know what is needed to ensure we build a more active Australia, that we can achieve sporting excellence and back community uh, grassroots sports at the same time. But we must safeguard the integrity of sport, which this bill seeks to achieve. The election and subsequent introduction of this bill into parliament um, 
post-election last year has allowed for additional consultation with stakeholders in both private and public sectors, and as a result uh, we now have greater clarity and context to the proposed amendments in the bill. Since the bill's first introduction in the previous parliament, uh, changes have been made to allow ASADA's secrecy provisions to be included uh, within Schedule 3 of the Freedom of Information Act and very minor and consequential amendments to harmonise operations within our Sports Integrity Australia bill. The proposed amendments will streamline administrative procedures in relation to anti-doping rule violations and reduce the burden on sports athletes and support personnel. <coughs> These amendments are supported by the feedback of stakeholders and include the removal of the anti-doping rule violation panel from the rule violation process and the removal of a pathway for review uh, by the Administrative Appeals Tribunal of a preliminary anti-doping rule violation decision of the RSADA CEO. These amendments, along with the previously introduced National Sports Tribunal Bill, are a complementary package of reforms. The ultimate decision as to whether a person has committed a violation will be made by a fair, independent, impartial decision maker. This government is implementing vital reforms to safeguard the integrity of Australian sport and to combat present, emerging and future threats, including doping, match fixing, illegal betting, organised crime and corruption. These reforms include establishing a new single national sports integrity agency. Sport Integrity Australia, which brings together ASADA, the National Integrity of Sport Unit and National Sports Integrity Functions of Sport Australia. Legislation establishing Sport Integrity Australia was passed by the Senate in February this year uh, and it stipulates the start of the new agency on 1 July 2020 and that will be headed by David Sharp, uh, OAM. Sport Integrity Australia will focus on regulation, monitoring and intelligence policy and program delivery, including education and outreach. Sports betting integrity capabilities will be maintained with ongoing support of the world-leading sports betting integrity unit within the Australian Criminal Intelligence Commission. The government has established the National Sports Tribunal, which began operations in March this year. Uh, that's been created to provide a transparent, independent and cost-effective resolution to sports disputes. The National Sports Tribunal will be trialled over two years and comprises of an anti-doping division, general division and an appeals division. Our government's record on safeguarding sport is there for the world to see. In February last year, on behalf of the Australian government, um, I signed the Makolin um, Convention and it's great to see the foreign minister uh, who was there on the day with me, uh, Senator uh, Maurice Payne. It's the only multilateral treaty specifically aimed at combating match fixing and other related corruption in sport. Because what we do know is organised crime uh, doesn't restrict itself to state boundaries or national boundaries. This is a worldwide problem and we need to work with other jurisdictions uh, to actually uh, mitigate uh, the impacts and to ensure that sport is fair for all. Uh, and, the, and the Macalin Convention actually um, is a great step forward in that, in that effort to protect uh, the safety, fairness and integrity of the sporting competitions we all enjoy so much. Membership of the Macalin community enables Australia to obtain formal, ongoing access to international counterparts and meetings to work together and drive these measures to combat sport corruption at a global level. Signing the convention supports national match-fixing, criminal legislation and complements similar laws where they exist within our states and territories to protect sport from wagering-related corruption. The integrity of sport is of paramount importance and our athletes expect to compete on a level playing field. We want them to compete on a level playing field because we know uh, we do all right on a level playing field as, Australia's, as Australians. As I said earlier, sport keeps us fit and healthy. It's the social glue that binds us together. It creates communities and underpins much of communities' life, and especially for those of us that live in the regions. Boston Consulting Group uh, actually did a review of Australian sport in 2017, and it showed that every year 14 million Australians participate in some form of sporting activity. And, as I said earlier, sport generates in excess of $40 billion of economic activity, making upwards of 3 per cent of our GDP, equivalent to our agriculture sector. So we're not, actually, we're not only just good at it, 
we, it underpins um, a lot of our economic activity and a lot of Australians are employed uh, within our sporting industry. Each year, the Australian government invests more than $300 million to support our high-performance athletes as they uh, prepare for a variety of international competitions uh, and the pathways for younger athletes as they seek to uh, aspire to the very highest levels of sporting prowess. I'm very proud of our government's record of investing millions to encourage greater participation at a community and grassroots level in sport. Um, we had a raft of measures under Sport 2030, including community infrastructure investment to help sporting clubs uh, build those change rooms that they need to ensure that young women and girls who are seeking to participate in NRL, in, who are seeking to participate in traditional male sports such as rugby union, AFL, cricket, etc., have somewhere where they can safely get changed uh, for the game. And that's been a great boon for so many sporting clubs out there in communities. Another program to increase participation focused on senior Australians. Once you get a little older and, the, and I'm in that category and you don't run as fast as you used to, you might give up participating in your loved sport. But what you also then end up missing out on is the social connection uh, that you have from engaging in that community activity. So a, a raft of money focused on ensuring we encourage senior Australians back into their local community clubs, whether it be soccer or netball, with modified game plans to ensure that they're also staying physically healthy. Uh, we also had a raft of measures that support sort of that increase in participation, um, which I'm incredibly proud of uh, our government backing the National Sports Plan and working with our state governments uh, to really find those pathways for young athletes. Um, whether they particularly are growing up in rural and regional areas, uh, getting to that state-level competition, financial support to get to the national competitions, uh, which can often be a barrier for them to really pursuing their dreams. Sport plays a fundamental role in Australia's life. Uh, we have obligations under UNESCO's International Convention Against Doping in Sport to abide by the principle of the World Anti-Doping Code. To that end, the Wood Review recommended a range of enhancements to the capabilities of ASADA. And our government is committed to delivering on those recommendations. The Australian Sports Anti-Doping Authority Amendment, enhancing Australia's anti-doping capability bill, will assist in combating the complex and evolved, evolving nature of doping in sport. I'm very proud to be part of a government that takes these matters seriously because sport is powerful and uh, we want people to be safely participating in it so that we can all be rightfully proud of Australian athletes on the international stage and be comforted that the juniors that are making their way uh, through the ranks um, on their way to that elite level uh, are equally protected from uh, undue influence from organised crime and, uh, and other, other sort of uh, negative influences. Our response will protect our cherished Australian sports for generations to come and have a lasting effect on the lives of all sport-loving Australians. I'm sure those sitting opposite share that aspiration for safe, fair, inclusive sport underpinning thriving communities, and it was a pleasure to work with the opposition uh, whilst I uh, was the sports minister in evolving um, our integrity arrangements. And I know, um, Senator Farrell, uh, as the shadow minister, you have enjoyed equally productive conversations with the current sports minister. This bill will help safeguard Australian sport and combat current emerging and future threats of doping, match fixing, illegal betting, organised crime and corruptions. Parents and guardians of junior athletes will know their children are protected from sport integrity th threats and be confident the sports in which they participate are clean, safe and fair. I would like to think uh, there's a lot of bipartisan goodwill around to make sure that that, 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 that aspiration is achieved, and I've been very buoyed by the contributions thus far. Uh, I support the bill. Authorised by Bridget McKenzie, National Party of Australia, Wodonga.